This is the story of Johnny Appleseed. Long ago, two years before America became the United States, John Chapman was born in Lemonster, a little town in the colony of Massachusetts near the coast. John's father owned apple orchards and soon John was able to help his father with his trees. Early in the spring, John would help his father place the smudge pots, small metal boxes between the trees so that the warm air from the hot coals inside them would rise up between the trees and keep the apple blossoms from freezing. Later, the bees would begin to visit the flowers and the tiny apples would grow behind the petals. Now, John was able to pick the bugs and other critters off those tiny apples so that they could grow bigger. And then in the summer, John would bring sweet, fresh buckets of water from the well to give the trees a drink during the hot summer. And in the fall, he would climb the ladders and pick the apples and fill the great bushel baskets. Then he would help his father harness the horse to the wagon and carry those baskets to market in the town. Now, as the years went by, John noticed that his little town was changing. More and more people had moved in. Many people felt crowded and uncomfortable. So others were moving out again. They would load all their belongings into great wagons and harness them to oxen, great powerful cattle. And they would head west to look for new places where they could spread out and have their own land and plenty of room. Now those pioneers needed many things, but one thing that made their lives a little more easy was sweetness. Now sugar was expensive and hard to come by, but apples had a natural sweetness. So John got an idea. He thought he could find a way to bring apples to the pioneers. Now he got in touch with some of his father's friends down in Pennsylvania. These folks owned cider mills. A cider mill is a building that is built on the side of a stream or a river. Outside there is a great wooden water wheel and as the water flows by it fills up pockets in that wheel and the weight of the water in the pockets keeps that wheel turning and turning. Now the water wheel on the outside is attached to two great stone wheels on the inside of the mill. And whatever you put in between those wheels gets all mushed up. So if you put kernels of wheat in between those wheels, you get flour for cake and bread and biscuits. If you put kernels of corn in between those wheels, you get meal for cornmeal mush or cornbread. And if you put apples in between those wheels, what do you think you get? Well, you get mushed up apples. We call that applesauce. And you also get drip, 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 apple juice or apple cider. And then from deep inside every apple, you get little brown seeds. So John arranged for his father's friends to save those apple seeds for him. And he traveled down to Pennsylvania and he collected those seeds. 
in a great leather pouch which he had made for himself. And when that pouch was full, he had two other things to do. The first thing he did was he took off his shoes. And pretty much for the rest of his life, he went barefoot because he wanted to feel God's good earth under his feet. The other thing he did was he got himself a cooking pot because if he was gonna travel west to bring apples to the pioneers, he was gonna to have to stop for the night and make himself some food. So he got himself a pot that would fit on his head. Now his pot fit him better than this one fits me. This one is too big. But John's pot was just the right size so that he could wear it on his head as he traveled through the forest. And when he stopped for the night, he could use the pot to cook his meals. So now he was ready. He had his pouch, his satchel full of apple seeds. He had his bare feet and he had his cooking pot. And so off he went through the wilderness. Now he often found himself traveling with other pioneers going west. They were headed to the mountains and they would cross them and then settle beyond the mountains. Well, if John met pioneers, he would give them packets of seeds and explain to them how they should plant them and care for them when they came to their new land. But then as he traveled, if he came to a place where a river took a deep curve, where it laid down rich, dark earth in a river bottom, he would stop and pick up a stick and dig holes in that rich dirt. And then he would drop a few seeds into each hole. Then with his pot, he would dip some water out of the river and give those little seeds a drink. Then he would say, grow little apple seeds. I'll be back sometime to check on you. And off he would go then through the forest. And when he found another place to plant, he would do that. And as the sun began to go down, he would make a camp for himself to spend the night. He would build a fire and collect the food that he needed. Now, John Chapman never owned a gun. He didn't use a gun. He didn't kill animals. He didn't eat meat. He ate fruits and vegetables and seeds and berries and nuts, which he would gather as he traveled along. And then he would cook them in his pot. He would lay down for the night and the next morning he would be up again and on his way. Now he traveled through what became the states of Ohio and Indiana and Illinois. Soon he began to come upon the settlements of those pioneers who he had given seeds to. They would recognize him. They would see his satchel full of apple seeds and his bare feet and his pot on his head. And they would call, here comes Johnny Appleseed. Now, as he traveled day after day, week after week, month after month, he began to come back around to those places where he had planted those first seeds. But now they weren't seeds anymore. They were little apple trees, seedlings. So he would always dig up a few and wrap their roots and stick them in his satchel as well. So that now he had seeds and trees to offer the pioneers. And when he would come to a place where those pioneers had settled, they would be glad to see him. Here comes Johnny Appleseed. Come, stay for dinner, spend the night. They were glad to have him. And after he had helped cook the meal, 
and clean up. He would sit by the fire and tell the children Bible stories. Now, John Chapman didn't carry a gun, and so he made friends with the Native American people who also lived in the wilderness. And he had many adventures with the animals because they knew he wouldn't hurt them. One time, he was traveling through a sunny high mountain meadow when out of the forest came a pair of roly-poly bear cubs. They knocked John over and played with him just like he was another little bear. And there sitting on the edge of the forest was their mother, not worried at all because she knew he wouldn't hurt her children. Another time, he came upon an orphaned wolf and he cleaned him up and took care of him and they spent some time together traveling through the forest. Another time, John was ready to stop for a rest, so he slung a hammock between two big trees. He climbed into the hammock and stretched himself out and was soon sound asleep. But later, he was awakened. Tweet, 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 tweet. And when he looked, there perched all up and down his body were birds of all kinds singing him awake. Another time, he was walking through a cool autumn forest when he came to a great flat rock in the open. The sun had been beating down on that rock all day. And John climbed up on that rock to warm himself from that heat. He stretched out. He folded his arms behind his head as a pillow. He stretched out his legs and crossed his feet at the ankles. And soon he was sound asleep. But he didn't know that this great flat rock in the sun was a favorite basking place for the rattlesnakes who lived under the rock in a cave. Well, one of those big old rattlesnakes came crawling out and up onto the rock, ready to take a nap in the sun. When he came nose to toes with John's big old bare feet, well, that rattlesnake was mad. What's this on my rock? And that rattlesnake opened up his mouth and took a big old bite, chomp, out of John Chapman's foot. But oh, oh, his foot was so tough from walking all those years barefoot that that rattlesnake's fang, oh, broke right off. Poor old snake. John traveled through Ohio and Indiana and Illinois for many years, even until he was an old man. In the year 1845, John was over 70 years old and still out tending to his trees. There had been a heavy, wet snowfall. And John was out shaking that heavy, wet snow off the branches of those young trees before the weight of the snow could break the branches. But it was so cold and he was so old that he collapsed in the snow. And there his Indian friends found him. And though they carried him to their village, and they wrapped him in warm blankets and they tended him with hot soup and medicine. He died. But even now, 175 years after his death, we're still thinking, we're still talking about Johnny Appleseed, especially at this time of the year on his birthday, September 26th. In the late fall, when there are so many apples of all colors and sizes filling the stores and the roadside stands, 
we think of him and all the trees he planted. We also think of him when we watch a fluffy pink sunset. For you know what those pink clouds are? Those are John Chapman's apple trees blooming in heaven. And that's just a few of the stories of Johnny Appleseed.